Well, a fellow by the name of Garbage Sean, I believe. I don't know where he is. That's his YouTube moniker, not mine. But he um, requested I do a bit of a clip. Raw, unedited. So that's what we'll do. We just uh, start the truck. I'm going to do a walk around, but I won't do a pre trip as such. Do a little walk around. So you're going to see quarter of a pre trip. I'm just not going to drop the bonnet or the hood as the Yanks call it over check the oil and water and all that shit for belts because I've already done that today just do a quick belt of the tyres this is known as a B triple I really don't need to hit these simply because you can see there's no big bulges the pressures would be pretty right um, that air is going in there because there's a hump back there that'll come over and I shut it down fairly quickly when I got here few hours ago so I haven't uh, replenished the air in the tanks. These will come good in a minute. She's filthy, been doing a lot of been a lot of rain, doing a bit of off-road work. See those tanks already recharged. I hope I don't get one that goes thunk. <coughs> I haven't even got a spare to change anyway. I've got to give her a hose out tonight when I get unloaded. And I'll clean. Clean. Uh, Good myself. <sighs> I see there's a lot of aerials on this. That's because my hobby is ham radio, amateur radio. I'm a little fastidious in some ways about inside of my truck. And in other ways, not so much. I never ever wear boots in the cab, but there's a reason. That is that I like to have the connectivity between myself and the truck, not through boots. So. Time is, we'll call it four o'clock. Take those off. I need to have my look and eyeglasses on. Just confirming that is a speedo reading. That was filling the logbook in for those that don't know what that is. Now I'm hoping that this camera is going to be pointing about the right place. Oh, yeah. um, but there's no guarantee it is. And I've got nothing that will show me what, I, what the camera is seeing. So, we'll just go as it is. So this is for garbage 
Sean, I presume Sean's a garbage truck driver in uh, somewhere overseas. Probably North America from some of the terms he used when he commented. So we'll put the window down. He requested to hear the engine. So I don't normally run with the window down. Especially not in winter. <laughs> as it is here but it's about 14 degrees centigrade here so won't be too bad out there don't know if you can see those three trailers in the mirror there i don't know what the camera will pick up i'll upload this as a, as high a resolution as i can so you can enlarge or do whatever you got to do on youtube to watch it to go a little bit wide when you go around corners like this and you'll note I'm staying well over here so this is not a training video or a tutorial I used to be a driver trainer many years ago but you know there's so much available on YouTube and other places if you want to go and watch that you probably can but when I change gears I change at around about 1600 revs that's going up in the gears it's fairly flat country out here so we'll probably not be doing too many gear changes down crossing 91 ton all up that's uh, 91,000 kilograms and uh, she's only rated at about 550 so she's a little bit short on in in horsepower so it doesn't take off like a shot out of a gun it does all right it's going to be upgraded here shortly in the next uh, probably three or four weeks when we get time to get it into Cummins and get them put the laptop on or, and uh, remap the engine but uh, for the moment I've got 550 I think she's going to go to 620 Probably up the uh, talk to about 22.50. But you know, I just drive the thing, it's not my domain that. I don't sign the checks and I'm not the workshop foreman, so I don't make any of those decisions, and nor would I even try to. So we're doing about 85 or 86 at the moment. couple of things here that may surprise people. Remember we left here, we drive on the left hand side of the road, this is divided road, so we sit on the right hand side. And normally I'll sit over there on the left, but up here, heading up this little bit of a rise over this channel, the left hand lane is as rough as Billio. So in a moment, given that there's no traffic nearby, I'm just gonna change lanes like now. around me 90 <coughs> some 
sometimes you creep up a little bit, sometimes you're a little bit under it, but I try and stay around the 90. Keeps the uh, gendarmerie happy. As I said, it's about uh, 13 degrees outside currently. Some weeks before we can actually get out in the paddocks where 
a lot of grain is stored in what's known as uh, grain bags or silo bags which are enormous great big I call them a condom they're like a huge condom full of grain and uh, they'll stretch a hundred meters long 100 yards long by uh, eight foot wide by four or five foot high and uh, you just drive up next to them and then they have an elevator that loads straight down to the bag straight in your truck as you're going but we won't even be able to get near any of those for if it's stop raining today which it probably won't because it's winter we won't even get near any of those bags for a month I don't think here's some rough stuff here I'll just try and straddle that a bit and I'll do it again here I don't know what the camera is picking up I don't know whether it's going to show where those I've avoided most of that, where those uh, hollows are, where the road subsided. Now this up here, not the car in the right lane, the one that's in the left lane in front of us, if the camera's picking it up. Uh, bit, we're about twice the distance away from a uh, rest area up here known as the Calder Woodburn rest area and uh, it's one of the few that we have that's properly set up it's actually got toilets and seating and I believe a barbecue area I've never used a barbecue area um, I used to carry uh, all cooking gear with me and a, and a little barbecue because it's probably more sanitary than uh, using one of those. But anyway, this is one of the best ones. You get probably a dozen trucks parked in there, probably 40 or 50 cars. And uh, yeah, it's got all the gear, toilets and everything. It's not a kiosk in there. You can't get food or drink. But like I said, there is a barbecue area, I think, which I've never used. And uh, there's a couple of garbage bins, which is good. Most of the rest areas we have, you've got nothing. You've got to bear your backside to the wind if you need to do a number two. And... Uh, have to uh, you no know, seating and yeah, not even a empty uh, 44 gallon drum or 200 litre drum to put your uh, garbage in just nothing just an area to get off the road and that would be 99% of all rest areas in this country let alone just around here to be honest it's pathetic should uh, avail us of some sort of facilities more regularly or more often. Anyway, it is what it is. Oh, I've got a garbage bag down there somewhere, but I'm not going to look around it and reach for it. Just got myself a drink out of the fridge. So I don't know how long uh, a clip we got to do for Sean. He said make it as long as possible. Well, uh, you'll likely be bored out of his little brain. And, although he did say that he wanted it to play in the background to put him to sleep. So. <laughs> It'll do that. My commentary probably won't help. Although it may help because I know uh, that I have little inflection in my voice. And so 
it's probably boring his bad shit listening to me as well. Anyway. It is what it is. Now, I got a missed call from one of our truck drivers. Really good mate of mine, well, I'll give him a ring later. I won't do it on the, while I'm taking this, doing this clip because he won't know that he's going to be on YouTube and he probably won't appreciate it because he's a very private person. So anyway, we'll go along here a bit further. I'll probably film this until I get to the Shepparton and Bypass, which is probably another 10 or 15 minutes. And Sean requested that it was raw footage unedited. So that's what you're going to get. Uh, the only reason why I'm doing a commentary, because I hate the sound of my own damn voice, is that I'm sure there'll be other people besides Sean that will uh, struggle upon this video. Maybe not immediately because I don't have many subscribers, but they may uh, stumble upon it eventually and they probably don't want uh, nothing but engine noise. So Sean doesn't get everything he wants. G'day also to my mate Johnny Fingers in Canada. G'day John. And g'day also to various ham radio friends that are subscribers that loyally watch uh, my clips. I'm never quite sure why anybody would want to watch them. I just put them up there and if people watch them I go, oh wow. Because oh. I'll be very honest, I probably wouldn't watch them if it was up to me and, and I stumble across my head. But then again, this is what I do for a living, so I'm very blase about it. And, uh, you know, it's, I've been uh, driving big trucks like this for 45 years. I think it's heading into towards 46 years. So, I don't... Uh, It's not all that interesting anymore. See the paddocks are very green. That's a canola crop by the look of it over there. It's only partly got out of the ground. There's a cereal crop. It'll be wheat or barley. Another cereal crop over there on the left. A few of those MANs getting about here now. They're 40 years ago they were popular for a while and they were totally unreliable. And people gave up on them. But there's been a push in recent times from MAN to uh, into the Australian market. There's a few of them about now. Um, I'm not sure if they're any more reliable than the old ones. Because, to be honest, the old ones were heaps of crap. But, people bought what they could afford. I guess it's the same story now, but you know, basically if you buy crap, you're in a world of pain with the repair bills eventually. Alright for the first few months when they're brand spanking you. And then they say, oh but we got good warranty, yeah, but downtime kills you worse than the the uh, actual repair and maintenance. And so if you have vehicles that are continually uh, in the workshop getting repaired, they're not earning any money. There's one company which I won't name, and it's going to be a hell of a serve to Mercedes-Benz, but there's one company uh, in the Riverina, I know for sure that have got a whole heap of what the drivers call Volkswagens. Uh, they're Mercedes, they're top of the range Mercedes trucks. And uh, most of the drivers that were allocated those trucks left the company because they 
spent so much time broken down. And now they have exactly twice as many trucks as they require because half of them are parked up on the fence and half are being driven. And what happens when they have a failure? They just pull one out, put it in the workshop or send it to Mercedes, do whatever it is they do, throw another one in there and the driver keeps going. And the drivers hate them. They absolutely hate them. So, big company executives that think that uh, getting a Mercedes is a really good idea. If it's for a rural company, it's probably not. They're all right on a bitumen. In fact, they're a good bitumen truck. They're a good suburban truck. Um, and doing that sort of stuff, and doing the work that I normally do, they just uh, they're just not in the same game. Not in the hunt. The company I work for. Currently is exclusively Kenworth and there's a reason for that. Because we need the reliability. We've got another one truck from another uh, manufacturer on demonstration at the moment. And I hope like hell they don't get it. Oh, it's got heaps of horsepower. And all of that cave of it. And I'm told it's very comfortable. But uh, if they were to allocate me one of them, I'd probably leave the company. And no, it's not Mercedes, it's another brand. <coughs> <coughs> and I really enjoy this job. But I don't want to spend all of my time sitting on the side of the road waiting for someone to come out and fix it. touch wood I've never ever had a failure with this truck at all <coughs> it's got about 400,000 on it the previous truck had uh, we had 1.2 million kilometers on it and I had two uh, two failures with it and those failures were that was with another company previous company service maintenance and so it's not an issue here we're going to have to give way to these because I have to turn really 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 late for this corner basically I hope he hasn't he's got the sense that he won't come forward because I need where he's been thinking about going no, good on him or her get around that corner. You'll see that back trailer just gets around there going as turning as late as I did and uh, going as wide as I did. Alrighty. So this is just going to be more of the same up here so I, I think we'll just uh, we'll just probably uh, off the clip here, assuming that it continued to film whilst I was walking down the back of the truck. I should have took the uh, the iPad with me and the app, so it lost Bluetooth connectivity. So I don't know if it's reconnected to it or not. So I'll just turn it off on top of the camera. I'll review the footage later and uh, if it's 
not horrible. I'll upload it for uh, garbage sawn tonight, maybe. If I'm not too tired when I'm ready to go to bed. Uh, still got a lot of day to go. I've got uh, three and a quarter hours driving time to three and a half hours, essentially, driving time to my delivery point. And uh, then uh, I've got to unload, so there's another couple of hours. So, so there's five and a half hours. And I'll probably have to wait to go in there, so it's probably another half hour an hour. Um, so that'll be getting up towards midnight-ish by the time I do all of that. Then I've got to clean these bodies out, wash them out. And, uh, and then I can uh, think about going to bed. So, the uh, whether or not I'll be in a position to upload this tonight is a moot point. But if I am, if I can, I will. In any case, you'll see it whenever you see it, I guess. All right, that will do. It's just basically more of the same from here. We just currently on the Shepparton Bypass for those that might be interested in my location and uh, this has a speed res restriction of 80 kilometres an hour around most of it and a couple of spots down to 60 kilometres an hour and it's got a heap of roundabouts which are very poorly designed in my opinion but hey I'm not a construction engineer so who do I, what do I know? Anyway, cheers for now. <laughs> oh, look at him. If he gets into it, he'll be right. And I'll back off and help him out, but... If somebody would have been coming around here a bit above the speed limit, and I'm actually under it, I'm only doing 70. you all but I don't want to be in a car and mess with something that weighs 91 ton simple as that because you're going to come off second every time <laughs> anyway he'd only had to wait there's one truck behind me and nothing else so he only had to wait for us to go past you know stupid alrighty Cheers all the best. I'll try and shut him down.